Welcome back to Story Dive, ladies and gentlemen, whoever you are, wherever you are. Welcome back to the train. Uh, we're on our next expedition. Story Dive is the podcast where we talk about all things stories, good stories, bad stories, how to make them, how to get into the industries that make them. I am your host, Kai, joined by my co-host, who was apparently born for this. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. I was born for stories, Kai. Oh, I'm Logan. Um, nice to meet you. I have pleasure. It's not like we've spent a good three months now on this train. Almost like I was born in the back. In the back Almost. car. He was born in the in the back car, yeah. I was born under the, the on, coal. Yeah, I was going to say I was born under the coal. I, I came out a, a dusty child. That was mean he's hot stuff, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've got that spark in me, you know? Mm, the flame. Oh, yeah. The flame of youth. Yes. So we have a really cool topic that I want to get to today. But before we get to that topic, um, we always do a quick segment for all the listeners out there. Uh, Story of the week, which is oh, a quick snap. We're, we're trying to practice our ability to tell decent stories. So, OK, Kai. Logan, Mac me broadside across the head oh, with a, a decent man. block of wood of a story. So I'll be honest, I uh, I did not come prepared this week, so I'm just going to come up with something, give you my raw storytelling talent, okay? All right. Okay, sounds good. All right, so there was, a, there was a blue bunny named Nestor, okay? He was this tiny little blue bunny. He has a trucker hat on, okay? He wakes up one day, and all he can think about is pepperoni pizza. He just really wants a pepperoni pizza. But he lives in the mountains with no civilization around. So he's like, I got to get a pepperoni pizza somehow. So he gets up and he gets ready for his day. You know, he didn't shave. So he's got stubble on his face still. Nestor, he busts his door down. Hey. Like he's straight up like, like, uh, you know, uh, somebody once told me, right? He kicks the door like Shrek. Like it's boom, baby. You know, in personal <laughs> groove. Kicks that door right yeah. open. Okay. And he, he's bustling outside and he's just, his tummy's grumbling. You can just hear it. Like it's echoing through the, 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 the mountains and his the, unshaved tummy. Yeah. And the, the birds start, start flying out of the trees. Right. Cause his stomach's growling so loud and it's like echoing Dang, through the, that's yeah, it's a, a heck of a so tummy. He's like, man, I gotta get some pizza because he had like, he had a dream about it. So he needs his pizza and he's walking through the woods and that's when he finds Philip, who's this fisherman, right? And he's, he's fishing in the river. And the fisherman turns to him and goes, man, these fish out here have been kind of strange lately. And it's just like, what do you mean? And uh, Philip's like, well, they've been kind of yellow and all cheesy. And he's like, oh, what are you, what are you talking about? And he's like, once a year, every leap year, the cheese fish come out of their, their caves and start taking over the oh, river. See? Geez. And Nestor's like, geez, that's what I need. Jeez, right. Fish. So, uh, the, for the next two weeks, him and this in Philip, they, he trains him out of fish and he gets, uh, these cheese fish and he's eating the cheese fish during these two weeks as his food source, but it's not the same cause there's no pepperoni, there's no bread. Um, and so, he gets the cheese fish after these two weeks and he, he's, he's scraping the, the cheese off the side of the fish, right? With like a cheese cutter. Um, and it's, it doesn't hurt the fish, right? It's just like this outer shell. Cause like they, they, they come from the milk lakes. I was gonna say, that sounds awful. They come from the milk lakes and all the cheese coagulates on the side of the fish and eventually it turns into cheese. So when, the, by the time <laughs> you got to the river, it was all cheesy. Um, so now he has a basket full of cheese. And he needs his other ingredients. Um, and uh, so, dude, I'll, I'll be honest. I, uh, I'm i running out of steam here. Um, okay, so okay. he, <laughs> so he goes. You know what kind of vibes ooh. this is giving me? Uh, you, know, you know in the <laughs> ultimate custom night when you die to Mr. Hippo and he just yeah. kind of goes off? <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got to finish it's strong. Kinda, okay. I need to finish like, strong. So um, yeah. Where does he get the pep, man? So he, 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 he the pep. so he wakes up one morning with the, he has the cheese and the, the, he gets visited by an owl and he doesn't know this owl's name. The owl's dark blue. 
uh, like, like, like the night, right? He's like a really dark, almost black. And he has this glow to him. And he's like, What's with you and blue animals, dude. Well, see, Nestor's like a light blue, right? Like he's out of blues clues or something, but see, this guy's like the, the freaking owl from like or in the blind forest. Like he does, he's, he's a, he looks mean. And he's like, have you ever been to the pepperoni forest? And he's like, what? And so he takes him to the pepperoni forest. He like picks him up. And he's like, Nestor's resisting, right? He's like, I don't want to go. To the, and then eventually he's like, wait, but I need pepperoni. So he's okay with it. So he gets dropped into this forest where there's like giant trunks of pepperoni trees. And he cuts one down and he starts shaving off the pepperoni. And he's like, cool, now I just need bread. And then he he goes to the, there's a, there's a town right outside and there's a bakery and they sell bread. And he gets the bread and uh, he goes back home and makes pizza at the end. Nice. What a journey. <laughs> that, that was a, that was quite the journey. Yeah. I, uh, I it's want, tough. it would have been in depth for all of it, but I was running out of juice. Uh, so uh, there you go. That's it my... really was towards the end. It was like, and you know, the, the, Birds, they don't eat rye bread because they don't eat bread. Who gave bread to bird? You know, that Mr. Hippo bit. Where right, it just kind yeah. of like goes off on weird tangents. <laughs> yes. So uh, there you go. That's my off the At cuff the end, he's story. like, and why does a story need to have a point? That's that's my... Uh, okay. the, the moral of the story is that if you have a goal to do something and you work towards it, you can achieve it. When there's a will, there's somehow definitely a very cheesy fish way. Yeah, when there's a fill, there's a cheese fish. That's the moral of the story. Way. Yeah. Way indeed. Way indeed, Logan. There you go. Well, so you actually brought up, <laughs> interestingly enough. Wait, what do you mean? Um, <laughs> you brought up, I'm actually going to send you a picture of a cheese fish. No. The closest thing that I could find to it. Oh, wait. Did you find a picture so, of a cheese fish? That. Whoa. Wait. This guy looks crazy. Does he have teeth? It's kind of, I don't know if I like this guy. He kind of has teeth. <laughs> the more I look at him. Maybe we'll put it in a in a link in the description of the video. But anyway. He looks like, um, he looks like he would taste like sherbet ice cream. <laughs> he looks like sherbet ice cream taste. Oh, now this is a sense. cheese fish. Viewers. Dude, I've had some cheese come out of my frying pan looking like that. You know what I'm saying? Looking like a fish. Well, okay. So you mentioned <laughs> Nestor, actually. I, I'm betting money, uh, a lot of doubloons at this point, that you don't actually know where the name Nestor kind of is from. No, I, it was literally just off the, off my brain. Like I, I there are some people I know with the last name Nestor, but like, I have n no idea. Like, I don't even think I, I know anybody with a first so, name Nestor. So. Interesting. Well, you're about to. Um, so meet Nestor of Gerenia, which is a legend. He's the legendary king of Pylos. Um, who and so Nestor is a secondary character in Homer's Iliad and Odyssey, believe it or not. Wait, what does that mean? Wait, Homer's Iliad and Odyssey, you know, what the Odyssey is the Odyssey, is yeah, that... yeah, the Odyssey. I don't know if I do, like, you're not talking about like the, sh what? the, 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 no, that's like the Enterprise. Dude, if you don't know space what the Odyssey, Odyssey? is, like it's going to be one heck of a... Wait, Space Odyssey? Are, are you talking about like... Here. Is it like a moment in history? Like a time period in history? Is that what you're referring to? No, I'm talking about the the ancient story, the Odyssey, with Odysseus going through... Like he just beat Troy. Listen, the, man. He beat the War of Troy. It's an ancient... I, I don't think I do. I mean, I, I know about like... There's like the Greek stuff or there's like that one story about like the the self-fulfilling prophecy where the guy the the guy's so afraid his son's gonna kill him that he like kicks him out and then his son ends up resenting his or he doesn't even know who his dad is and ends up like growing up to overthrow the king and ends up killing his dad it's like the self-fulfilling prophecy like I, I don't know if it's like something like that 
or if it's like something like like Theseus, where it's like more philosophical, or you know, that's who is that Sisyphus? Uh, it's sort with of the rock. Well, that's Sisyphus with the okay. the rock. Yeah, the, like what what, the, what what is the Odyssey? Yeah, is it real? Rock, is it real history? No, well, it's that it's debatable actually. Um, Interesting. It's a debated topic. <laughs> There's several documentaries on this. Okay. So for the listeners who are probably really lost right now, I don't we are know going what to be is. talking about ancient storytelling, the oldest forms of storytelling, just ancient ways of telling story and how they've influenced humanity's way of storytelling today and how they honestly, there's a lot of similarities after so many years. So uh, Logan, yes, quick, quick update on the Odyssey. It is, um, it's a book, I guess you could say written by Homer. That's why it's called Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. Okay. I it's thought you really, meant like a really long book. Cause it's a very, I, I, I'm just saying that when you say Homer and Odyssey, like for someone today, uh, they would probably think of the Simpsons and Mario Odyssey. Cause that's what I thought of. Um, that's funny. Oh. Well, I, I still think a lot of people would still think about like the the Odyssey itself is a very very famous story, incredibly okay. famous. Story. I I, um, I it's it's believe taught it. in most schools at least when I grew up. Interesting, because in you know I I I went to school. I, I somehow never learned about it. So I'm not discounting what you're saying, but I'm also very much someone who, outside of anime and video games, doesn't really know much. So. Um, I'm super down to, to be your, a fresh pair of eyes on this, you know? Okay. Interesting. Well, so the Odyssey is just one of very many, very famous ancient literary works. Um, I'm trying to think of what the Odyssey was written in. I guess it was just written in Greek question mark. It wasn't written in Microsoft Word. Um, uh, no. <laughs> they definitely did not have Microsoft <laughs> upwards of 3,000 years ago. I they, think. They, they had micro- uh, the micro- Odyssey <laughs> was public. Microsoft Plank or something like that. Yeah, they had Microsoft, Microsoft Tablet. Stone. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it, it was. So it's texts. Uh, people have tried to track it to just about somewhere around 2700 BC. Um, if you're running off of before uh, the, not the common era kind of time right. frame, but so like that, that's Christ. pretty long. So 20, 2700 BC. Yeah. Well, yeah. A long time ago is when this was recorded. So I have here many different characters and this is going to be really interesting since i'm not sure how much of these you know you you actually might know a decent portion of them oh like i'll you should name um, them and I'll, I'll tell you the, well i'm not gonna necessarily name them oh, okay. you see i have in front of me a series of four rounds each round consists of two riddles oh man these riddles are the answer to these riddles are different uh elements included in different ancient works and so i'm going to introduce the thing by talking or by giving you the riddle and i need you to guess what it is and then we'll we'll talk about the thing does that make sense yes yeah so i need to try and solve the riddle and then we're going to talk about it yeah we're gonna okay. i'll talk about where the character is from um, how old that character is as a as a it could be a character okay could be and thing, then it could are, be a number wait, of, so are these characters like, that were created via story or are these pe- the people who created the stories themselves like are, are we talking author these are or, or, the characters the the things in the stories the things in the stories okay and the odyssey was created by one guy the odyssey was written by one man homer i think he was partially right uh, okay you mentioned homer sorry i I, (laughs) you may are you already mentioned homer like three times homer made the odyssey but the odyssey could be based off of actual historical events 
Sort of. So the Odyssey comprises of the hero Odysseus, who at the beginning of the story, um, the tale of the Trojan horse, I'm sure you're familiar with what a Trojan horse is. Yeah, isn't it? It's like a big wooden horse, right? That people pilot. Sort of, Is yeah. So right? the concept of the Trojan horse in in the Odyssey, you're, you're close. Okay. You get the basic gist of it. It's a horse, yeah. That people get it. So Odysseus needed to invade Troy, but didn't know how. So he and his soldiers built a giant uh, horse, and it's supposed to be a monument to Troy's victory over. Uh, I think it's the Greeks, something like that. Okay. Troy and Greece were were at war with each other for. I might be totally misrepresenting this. This is the best that I can get from my limited uh, understanding of the Odyssey. But yeah, it is Greece. Okay. So, oh, it's actually a bunch of originally they were poems, epic poems. So really long poems. Anyway. Um, they made the horse monument and sent it into the city. And inside that horse is all of the soldiers. So they were able to get into Troy basically undetected. And in the dead of night, after the after Troy was, you know, celebrating that they'd won the war and they got drunk and stuff, uh, Odysseus and his soldiers went in and basically conquered Troy in the dead of night, almost completely unscathed in at least in that fight right mm, so Odysseus okay. then has to get back to Greece but in doing as he goes back to Greece he goes through a series of adventures um this is kind of where the story the concept of an epic is or an epic adventure where right. it's just a really long form series of tales that involve the same character and that character has to kind of grow over those series. That okay. Long form, okay. I like, see. Series of stuff. Okay. So I'm following that's, you. That's the Odyssey. Odysseus is is one is the hero of that, and he he goes through he goes through a, a lot in that thing. Yeah. And his whole motivation is he wants to get home to Greece, where um, his wife and son are. So he wants to get back to his family, and that's like his big motivation. Yeah. Very, very interesting stuff. Incredible storytelling. And, you know, it's it's interesting that it's still taught to this day in schools. Even though oh, it's like over 4,000 years old almost. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I think that's super cool. And I'm almost kind of sad that I never learned about it. <laughs> so, so now's but, the time. But it's very compelling. Yeah. <laughs> now's yeah. the time. What's interesting about it is just me telling you about it. I like from across the train, I can feel your compellingness. Wait, wait, really? You can feel, <laughs> you can feel yeah. like my interest. At least a little bit. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Well, I'm ready for the, I'm ready for the riddles. Okay. Okay. So here we go. Round one, drum roll or bring a gong with drums hit a drum against a gong and let's uh, get started uh, um, uh, uh, okay <laughs> here i go somehow yeah we we fit a gong inside this train car and a drum and slammed it together so round one is round one is monsters different ancient myth uh not necessarily mythological monsters I guess they could exist in something that is considered mythology. To my understanding, mythology is something that was originally practiced as a religious kind of theological lifestyle that then not necessarily was debunked, but kind of like was not practiced anymore. If that makes sense. So some of these are mythological creatures, like from Greek okay. mythology and stuff. And some of them are from even more ancient texts than that. So... Well, I guess there's only two of them that I've listed, but here we go. Uh, shout out to ChatGBT for helping make these. Um, if you have problems with the way I write my poems, uh, take it up with ChatGBT. <laughs> give okay. him a, give it a, give I'm gonna a hey, I'm gonna have to have a stern talking to with him after this. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, here's the first one. With six heads and twelve legs, I roam in the depths where the oceans foam. Sailors fear my monstrous form. What creature am I in the storm? Uh, the Hydra. Uh, you're close, actually. Really? You're, Is it the Kraken? I think you're close. You're in the same ballpark. It's not the Kraken. Leviathan. Uh, you're also, you're pretty close in that as well. So it's not Hydra, it's not uh, Kraken, just, it's not Leviathan. I uh, just Googled Hydra and man, that's, it's like an actual creature. Um, that's a, I'm, I'm, I need to it, not look at that. I'm going to get distracted. You, you said something about it being in the ocean. And you also said something about it having mm -hmm. multiple heads. So I, have, I, I guess in this instance, you wouldn't necessarily uh, fully know what it is because it exists in a story that I already know that you don't know of. So, is it, have, so... Is it does it have a specific name? I'm trying to guess. Or yeah, it does. Man, this is hard. I don't um, know. That's okay. We can we can. Bro, it's uh, it's you're you're right Squidward. in the same ballpark. It's it is with six Greek. heads. Bird with six heads. That's my that's a nightmare answer. for my dreams. Okay, Squidward with six heads is eh, incorrect. Oh but gosh, as it. I said before, you are actually really close. With a, uh, you're in the ballpark of Greek mythology, and this is where this comes from. So the monster we're going to be talking about is Scylla. 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 There's two ways of pronouncing. Sure. Have you heard that name before? No, I've heard of like Priscilla. That's about it. Uh, I'm wondering if Priscilla might come from. Scylla? I don't know. <laughs> Either way, Scylla um, is described as a giant gaping mouth in the ocean. It's like a. It's not necessarily a god, but it, it's kind of like a. It's like a monster god, a legendary monster creature thing that is a giant mouth in the ocean, uh, and then basically just. It opens up, and there's a giant whirlpool in the ocean down to the depths of Scylla. And Dang, it, that's terrifying. She is known to eat thousands of different ships and all kinds of other creatures and stuff. Dang. So you can find the Scylla in the Odyssey. It's one of the creatures that Odysseus right. has to uh, work around. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, it reminds me of a uh, Wind Waker or um, something like that, where there's a whirlpool and then there's like a monster in it. Um, yeah. So, uh, at least that's one way that this thing. I right. guess it can. Oh, Scylla, in my mind, is very similar to Hydra. It's just that the Scylla is. Kind of more of an aquatic thing. Yeah, that's why I thought it would be like and a Hydra kraken, is more of like a dragon. But so you said it had six heads. Does that mean it has six big mouths? It does. That all open up. Uh, that is an excellent question. I mean, Ooh, it, <laughs> I totally mixed it up. So sorry. Oh, so Scylla is a creature. Oh, I totally mixed them together. That was oh. my bad. Interesting. Wait, you made, you made a new creature? So, Scylla. Not necessarily. I just accidentally mixed two creatures together. So the Scylla is kind of more like an aquatic Hydra thing. Yes. Just picture uh, uh, a creature with six dragon heads and 12 legs, 12 octopus legs. And right next to it, so Scylla and its her sister, Charybdis, is the giant Oh, uh, okay. So, what does Scylla do in the water? If Scylla is not the one making the whirlpool, Scylla is, in my memory, Scylla picks off a lot of the crewmates of Odysseus's ship once they make it past Scylla and into kind of like a siren's. It, it's like a canyon, but in water, if that makes sense. So, like on either side of them are cliff sides. They're just going through that pass in water. This wow. is clearly like, from 
Like you mean memory. like 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 what like Moses parting the sea kind of a deal? Mm, no, kind of like if you've ever watched Sinbad, you know when they go through a the DreamWorks Sinbad, they go through like it's water and it goes through two cliff sides on either side of them, like two mountain ranges right next to each other, and in between them is a is a pass of water. They have to go through that little pass of water, and in front of it, in front of that pass, is what Charybdis, Charybdis guards that front, and then inside mm. the side is Scylla. And then once they get past those, then there are the Sirens, which I'm, I don't know oh, if you're man. familiar wait, with Wait, those. wait, wait, Sirens are, uh, that are Sirens, uh, mermaids? Yeah, uh, similar, similar too. So they're mermaids that, um... They they have like heavenly singing voices and they drag sailors down into the. Well, that's what I thought depths. mermaids were eventually, and then or uh, not eventually they would. That's what they were originally, and then eventually they got turned into this like fun aquatic female race kind of thing. <laughs> I think, I think you're right. Originally, um, I think but, that like the origin of mermaid was the whole deceiving. Uh, kind of thing for sailors, and then it, like, it's almost like it's almost like a, a succubus of the sea kind of a thing. Not not quite the same thing, but yeah, just like a a very like a misleading, like you don't don't trust it kind of thing. But um, yeah, that's interesting. So okay, so we have we have the Scylla in the front guarding the canyon, and then you have no no no. Yeah, yeah, you have Sil in the front guarding the canyon. You have then... Charybdis guarding the canyon, and oh, Charybdis Scylla's in the canyon. So Scylla, okay, so Charybdis has the whirlpool yeah. in front. Charybdis is the whirlpool. Yes. Yes, and then Scylla is okay. I see. I see. I have the picture in my brain now. The whole uh, freaking water monster family. It's in my brain. Yeah, it's pretty horrifying to think about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, so actually, I like, like if I had to deal with any one of those, I'd be freaking out. Which is so interesting because Odysseus, he also, like, I can imagine, would be panicking. I remember watching a really old film of the Odyssey and kind of seeing Charybdis for the first time, and I was like, um, yeah, they're dead. This is the end of the story. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the Odyssey does really good at putting a, this like pretty much almost impossible task. And Odysseus, he's not necessarily like a demigod or anything. He's just a hero. So he uses his wits and his skill to conquer these things. And it's it's a cool story. So um, anyway, yeah, that's, so that's really our, cool. our next uh, monster. Yes. To round out the first round. Here we go. Here's the here's the thing. In the forest where giants tread, I guard its secrets where dreams are fed. My breath is fire, my roar a quake. My name strikes fear with every shake. What? Dude, you threw me off with that fire breath. Can you say the first line again? In the forest where giants tread. And then the next one was about like putting to sleep or. Uh, I guard its secrets where dreams are fed. Uh, where dreams are fed. Dude, this one's hard. Because it's, it's obviously a big monster because it quakes and stuff. It like quakes around, super big, blows fire it's in the forest, and it has to do with like getting like sleep. It has to do with like maybe getting sleeping people or like having to. Because like all I can think about is like a like we just talked about dragons, but like this sounds kind of like a dragon himself. Um what dragon would be interested in sleeping people or guarding something in the forest? Does it make any sense? Um, I'll be honest, dude. I don't really have a I don't really have a name for this guy. 
Maybe we could, maybe we can call him. Uh, it's okay. It's a. Uh, like, uh, I want to call him like Jan Tax or something. Jan. And he's he, and he's a big sure. he's a big <laughs> minotaur with demon wings. And he has a flaming axe. That's my final answer. I feel like you're really describing the manticore a little bit in this. <laughs> it sounds a little bit like a the manticore, but you're you're kind of close in that it is a giant. So the creature that is being depicted here is the ogre slash giant slash demon Humbaba. Humbaba. He's the guardian of the yeah Humbaba. Humbaba. He's the guardian of the cedar forest. Wow. So he's an ancient Babylonian monster, I guess you could say, uh, that fights Gilgamesh and his partner Enkidu. No way. Gilgamesh? In ancient Babylonian mythology. Who's Gilgamesh? I've heard of him. You have heard of Gilgamesh. What's he from? So Gilgamesh, well, he's he's from the Epic of Gilgamesh, which... Oh. is currently the oldest it's it's classified as the oldest story that we can find recorded really on text first story of all man- mankind the the first oldest story that we can that wow. we can see at least shout out to the epic of gilgamesh dude. wow this thing is definitely over 4000 years old Wow. Um, similar to the Odyssey, but the Odyssey came way later than the Epic of Gilgamesh. Yeah. So, okay. Interesting. It was written in something called cuneiform, so uh, which is like it's like someone took a rock, a triangle rock, and indented it in different shapes on a on a tablet, and that made cuneiform, which is what told the story. What the heck, dude? You're blowing my mind right now. Um. So this monster, what'd you call him? Umbaba. Umbaba. He defeated Gilgamesh back in the day. He did not defeat Gilgamesh. He he dies to Gilgamesh actually. Oh, okay. So interestingly enough, Gilgamesh is two two thirds god, one third not god. Which I'm not sure how you get exactly a two to one ratio split of god to not god um but yeah, somehow uh, he he makes it happen he, he had a mom and a dad and an uncle who all yeah somehow the uncle is involved <laughs> <laughs> oh man somehow um okay so yeah that's whack or maybe maybe he had well, a he had a step so yeah, his parents were gods, and then his like stepmom was a human. Uh, I think he was blessed question mark by a goddess that was actually his mom. Oh, and was like, "I'm gonna give you your true powers" or something like that. Wow. So that's where the second third of godness. Wow. Usually, a monster he gets, people. Anyway, like this don't have like an actual backstory so that's that's interesting so gilgamesh is the the god person oh Umbaba i thought you were talking about umbaba is... i was like umbaba sounds really interesting okay never mind well umbaba is <laughs> he 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 does also have his own backstory oh, okay he's considered he's also called the mountain man um he's the protector of the cedar forest which is a forest full of monsters and myths and stuff. And Enkidu was is Gilgamesh's uh like blood brother. Not blood brother, but like kind of sworn brother. Okay. Comrade at arms, Enkidu. I guess. But Kakashi yeah. is the might guy kind of thing. Yeah, like Samwise so Gamgee. Enkidu's Yeah, yeah, just like that. Inseparable duo. Yeah. So the story of this, I uh, I don't want to spoil it actually, because since even though it's such an old thing, I feel like it's it's so old that not 
too many people no, know it's true. the entirety of the Epic of Gilgamesh. I think you're you're um, you're right about that. So I kind of want people to like re- at least not read. You can find podcasts that like go through these things. Highly recommend you do so. I'm not necessarily one to plug like what we would generally consider as a competitor, but in this case, do it. Go go yeah. go listen to something about the Epic of Gilgamesh and tell us what you find because with such an old story, there's bound to be so many good things about storytelling that you can learn there. Um, yeah, it's weird. People don't typically go back to like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like not a lot of people are looking for stories that came out before they were born, you know, like maybe some, but um, like, like I can, like there's some old like 60s TV shows and things, but yeah, it's crazy how many stories have been told up to now that like people just have no idea that they exist yeah yeah so, but I, I knew him baba would be kind of a he'd be kind of a left field one because there's just so little people that i know of that had know of the epic of gilgamesh yeah. let alone have somehow read it is you can you can read the odyssey like it's now kind of in book form uh so you can you can read it and experience the story for yourself. It is an enormous book. It's an epic, so it's like consuming a dictionary almost. Yeah, but um, hey, but it's worth it, man. And there have been some movies on it. You'll learn a lot. These things. It's interesting because both the stories I've mentioned before have the hero's journey in it, have character arcs that involve redemption and and explorations of the human form and especially in these mythological things fantastical creatures and and magic powers and all kinds of stuff it's crazy yeah okay super cool so we're gonna go to the next round which is characters okay uh you you might recognize these a little bit more or at least if i name them you'll probably recognize them yeah, I want to get at least one. So here's here's the first one. Yeah, uh, uh, listeners, whoever's following along, please let us know your score as well. I want. I'm interested, dude. I'm, o- I'm honestly, over two. I don't know how many of these I would have got. <laughs> yeah, I'm over two. <laughs> okay, okay. O for two to blue. O for two to blue. Okay. This one. Uh, the characters. So here, I, I'm going to start now. Okay. This is me starting. Okay. W- wings of feathers, dreams of flight. To touch the heavens in bold delight, but hubris led to a fiery plight. In waxen wings, he took his flight. In waxed wings, he took his flight. So this, to me, I think, like by the time you were done with it, I was thinking about Kid Icarus, um, or just Icarus, um, and so. I feel like that's my final answer, but I feel like it because these are characters. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm gonna lock in with Icarus. And he's right. Let's he go. got one right. It is Icarus. Dude, let's go. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, so the story of Icarus and and I think it's Archimedes and his son Icarus he flew is too close another to the very intriguing one. It's yeah, he flew too close to the sun. He burnt up, and Archimedes had to watch his son basically fall into the ocean and die. Oh man! I mean, that's um, the part people don't really talk about. Um. <laughs> yeah, it is a tragedy. <laughs> like, because a lot of people, you know, the the name Icarus is really cool because it's like associated with kind of angelic flight. Yeah. Um, yeah, Icarus wings and stuff like that, but. Yeah, Icarus wings. Um, oh, sorry, not Archimedes. It's Daedalus. Is the the Daedalus? Dad. Okay, I should have known that. Uh, people, uh, every Percy Jackson reader is like freaking out at me in the comments. <laughs> I can just hear. It. Dude, I don't even. I, I, don't I even got know it. The comments of. I don't know these names very well, but I know Icarus. Okay. So I was able to get one. Yes. You know, Icarus, the story of Icarus is really intriguing to me because even though it's a tragedy, it's a very compelling story. 
yes. of like it's it's like a cautionary tale of like your ambition can lead you to do wrong yeah it's kind of like the tower of babel kind of deal it's a very similar story yeah it's like uh, you 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 went too far with it <laughs> and yeah ambition it did not end well. while good and can create good things can also lead to terrible like downfalls and stuff yeah uh-huh so like, yeah mm-hmm. okay i do think that's awesome the on this real quick aside on this the art of the tragedy the tragedy story i think is kind of uh you're not seeing it as often as i think one would want to so yeah the, like telling a story that doesn't necessarily have a very happy ending yeah it's um, uh it's interesting um this is a whole topic for another day but i do think that the whole idea of like stories that don't have good endings or that have actual tragedy in them i feel like are the ones that people consider their favorites most of, like a lot of the time like um and th- i i know this is a weird this is a weird time to talk about this but uh mr beast uh has been releasing some videos in 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 recent months um that don't have a happy ending and they're honestly some of my favorite videos he's he's released so i i i'm with you on that i feel like more stories should try and tell stories that kind of have a lesson to learn or maybe make you think about stuff or Maybe or like they hit you in a certain way because they're relatable, like all of all the in between, right? Like when I think about Icarus, I'm like, you know, sometimes like I I, re- I relate to it, but it's also like a a story that anybody can relate to in terms of like they under it's a very easy thing to understand, but it has such weight to it, right? Yeah, and I mean, there's I think that's where uh, was it Sakurai that made Kid Icarus? I think he, that's where he was he made, going. No, with, so he Sakurai didn't it. make Kid Icarus. I, I actually am unsure who made it. It may have been, I think it was the guy who made Metroid. Don't quote me on that. But he's the one who made the reboot, Kid Icarus Uprising for 3DS, which is what people know it for these oh, okay. days. Um gotcha. Well, but, yeah. I mean, that character is it is very most very much uh I guess loosely related to the ancient story of Icarus. Yeah, I think they they liked the the character of Icarus, and then they kind of like threw him into a different like adaptation of Greek mythology and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, it is interesting how in in the 3DS game he can't fly on his own; he needs help from someone else to fly. So, um, it it is interesting how that it's still kind of brought up in a way where um, his flight is limited. And for all we know, it could be because of something he did in the past. I'm not too keen on the lore, um, but Me yeah. Neither. All right. Okay. Next. Well, so yeah, that's that's Icarus. Um, next character. Next character. This is the last one for round two. Okay. Okay. In shadows deep, a knight did roam, betraying the king and breaking home. Oof. Gosh. For love's embrace, he dared to stray, but honor lost, a price to pay. Gosh. <laughs> oh. You you good? <laughs> yeah, I just, I know this character, <laughs> and I find this character to be so very intriguing. It's okay. like, a, I actually, it's grown on me a lot. Yeah, okay. Can, can you say it for me one more time? Ooh, I already gave it away. Oh, I wasn't yeah. listening. In shadows deep, a <laughs> no, 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 to that last when you okay. said that you, when you said you gave it away, I wasn't listening to that part. Like I don't, I don't think I know. Oh, got gotcha. you. Okay, yeah, I know. I listened to it the first time. In shadows deep, in 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 shadows deep, a knight did roam, betraying the king and breaking home. For love's embrace, he dared to stray, but honor lost, a price to pay. I almost just read off the name because it's listed underneath the Bro, name. it sounds like Zuko. Um I don't know. Um I, like do you do you think I know this one? Do you think I'll I do think I'll be able to name him? 
I think you'll find the name familiar. I don't know if you know the person's actual story, but you'll definitely find the name familiar. Like a, a knight who lost his honor uh, because of love? He betrayed the king? I mean, it sounds... I'm thinking of like Jamie Lannister or like... You know, there's Cain from Cain and Abel, but he's not really a knight. There's also like, uh, there's like Judas or whoever who betrayed Jesus. I'm, I'm just thinking about betrayal. Um, yeah. Because I don't know if it's like, uh, you know, because it would be, it would, this would, maybe it wouldn't, because this could be from any story, right? It's not like necessarily from Odyssey or anything. Um yeah, these though I will say these are all from ancient stories. What's right, so ancient. this could be like King Arthur stuff, like because you said knight. So who would have been? Who would have betrayed back then? I don't know. I don't know. I uh, I don't know too many names of like knights of old. Sadly, I feel like I okay. should because I really yeah. Well, this is actually one of the more famous knights. So I will give you a half doubloon for that one. Really? Um, what, because what, what did I say? <laughs> you are in the right mythos with uh, King Arthur. Oh, okay. It's, it's Arthurian. Okay. Let me see if I, um, if I get the name. It's not King Arthur himself. Right. It wouldn't be him. No. Okay. I only know him and Merlin. I, 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 do, I actually read some of the King Arthur stuff in high school. So I really should know this, but I don't. So you can just tell me. Okay, it is Sir Lancelot. Lancelot, bro. Okay, dude, it's 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 like kind of coming back to me now. Like, because I I don't remember what the book was called, but we definitely read some stuff related to King Arthur in high school, and it's coming back to me. So okay, I, I want you to explain. Was it for chance, Camelot. Maybe it was. I I, I can't remember because I I think there's multiple books, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay. I don't know. Uh, my best, it's interesting, my best exposure to this is actually Camelot the musical uh, <laughs> that my wife had. We, She and I went and watched it. That's a that's a deep cutting musical. It's it's a tragedy. It's definitely a tragedy. Um, wow. Yeah. So Lancelot, Sir Lancelot, he's from France. He's from France I a think. lot. <laughs> uh, where was Lancelot? He's from France. <laughs> prance a lot <laughs> he, likes to uh, he likes to prance a lot you made me okay. lose my train of thought no, I'm done he likes to prance a lot and prance a lot oh. dude I've completely lost my train of thought you got him Where, uh, what was I doing you were talking about Lancelot. you You watched the play to actually learn a lot about the mythos All Right. the musical okay he's is he from France? That's what you said. I don't know. He's you from said. a not. He's not from around Camelot. <laughs> he goes to Camelot to where uh, is Camelot? Where's Camelot at? You know, yeah. Is it like an island in between North That's America a, a and Europe that sunk to the bottom of the ocean? So Camelot is considered to be in Wales slash England. Okay, sort of. At least in 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 legend, I don't know if it was a real place or not. Um, King Arthur, then the Arthurian legend, is l potentially loosely based off of an actual King Arthur, but I don't know. It's probably not as accurate as to be taken literally, like scriptural. But anyway, so Lancelot is from France. I'm just going to say he's from France, and he, this man, th dude, this guy has got Riz, like coming out of his cheeks all the time <laughs> this dude is hot stuff bro um he invented and the he riz quickly becomes friends he invented riz almost kind of yeah so he comes to camelot to join the knight's table or the round table and he quickly becomes arthur's close friend um pretty much his closest friend okay and it's at least in the in the musical. I don't know if this is like how it really goes, but 
like Lancelot believes himself to be basically graced by God to to do no wrong. Um, he he's a holy knight, as he would consider himself. He's just okay. There's I mean, a reason he's the best, and it's because God has favored him to be the best. It's kind of a uh, I feel like he, um, sent, he sent himself up for failure Groot, with that, but uh. Well, like it. sort of. It's interesting because his faith is not unfounded in the stories. As in, like, he accidentally slays one of the other knights of the round table at a tournament and he, like, prays that they be healed and they are miraculously healed. Uh, oh, man. Even though they got ran through with a the sword. There's there's a lot to... I mean, there's a lot to unpack with all these stories. But yeah, with this Lancelot guy sounds crazy. Like, he, he really was considered in the story a holy knight. His fatal flaw, however, is that he catches the eye of Queen Guinevere, which is King Arthur's wife. Uh, okay. And the two of them, um, they, they, they get it on things, oh, and they go and no. they go and have a their own courtly romance behind Arthur's back, and part of it. Bro, that's like Part rule number the, one, bro. That's rule number one. It really is bros before hoes. Oh, as it were. man. Well, but that's that's he, not even what I mean. broke the it's... golden rule. <laughs> well, maybe yeah, it is, but it's like, come on, bro. It's like, he's it's it's the queen, bro. Like, yeah, but, it but really, the, the, it's but not it, only it's on him, it's broken. on her. Yeah, it's like she wanted to, and it's like, guys. You can't be best friends with the king and then and then so, start smashing his wife, dude. That's messed up. All right, Lancelot, yeah. you lost my well, respect, so, bro. Go take your holiness somewhere else. I don't, I don't need your cheek, Riz. <laughs> Get it out of here. Cheek, Riz. <laughs> well, interestingly enough, when the affair is kind of found out by Arthur's surrogate son, question mark, Mordred, um, it's brought to the the knights, the round table, and basically it brings the end of Camelot. Camelot is destroyed. This and this affair isn't necessarily the thing that destroys it, but it is kind of the nail in the coffin. Yeah, dude. GG's to the group, the group chat, the friend group. It's over, man. GG's to the round table Discord server. Too and, many, and too many bridges were burned with that one interaction. You gotta be careful. <laughs> well, this is another interesting point of a tragedy, a very cautionary tale. And uh, one of the reasons I find Sir Lancelot so interesting is here's this bastion of hope and freedom, and and the round table is supposed to be in a world where violence is the end. And like, if you don't like someone, you run them through with a lance. The round table was supposed to create, or it, I guess in within the story world, it's the first kind of iteration of like the court of law and that someone right. should stand trial to prove their, their crimes before they are ran through with the sword. At least they should, at least we should prove it first before right. we run them through. Um, so the story here is is so much it's a tale of like trying to create a morally good system and imperfect people doing imperfect things are the reason that like it fails which is so intriguing to me especially with Lancelot as a character because because he is kind of that bastion of hope and peace and yet he's also the most responsible for kind of its destruction. Yeah. Like he's, he's kind he's, of got chosen one vibes to me. Yeah. He's got like, he can do no wrong. And yet he made the most fatal mistake of all of them. Like it, it is very, it's kind of ironic and symbolic in a way. And it's, it's very interesting. Um, how like everybody has a weakness. Everybody has something that they struggle with. Um, even if they're so holy that they can kill you and then revive you because they're sorry that they killed you, you know, like that's so weird, but right. Yeah. 
you well, know. so that that is Lancelot, and I, yeah, that does bring cool. uh, a lot of these stories, all these characters and things that I've mentioned thus far have very deep character arcs and very, very deep fatal flaws, which I think characters, especially in lots of mythologies, possess something called the fatal flaw. And I, I do think it's what a lot of modern characters are kind of missing. Yeah, in, in writing dude. good characters. Yeah, I mean, I don't not I don't have any characters coming to my mind specifically, but I do agree that characters need flaws to be interesting um, and to be relatable too. Like, in order to have a compelling story, you need conflict, and a really easy way to have a good conflict is to have a character who has these very human attributes that they kind of have to work through. Um, so, I agree. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. So, uh, in the interest of time, um, we're going to skip mm, round three and go straight to the final round. Oh, snap. Okay. And we're actually just going to do one of them because the other one I don't have too much for. Um, I'm down. Let's let's go, dude. I'm at well, one, one and a half. Yeah, we'll see. One and a half okay. out of like four. Let's do the first one. One and a half doubloons. Yeah, thus far. Yeah. Dude. So, here we go. It's better than I thought I'd do, so I'm, I'm happy. Beneath the waves... Yeah, I'm happy for you too, man. <laughs> I'm proud. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a good day. <laughs> Beneath the waves where shadows loom, lost to time in watery gloom, treasures gleam in the city's eye, a kingdom's echo beneath the sky. Okay, the, I feel like this is Atlantis. Wait, wait, is this, wait, is this supposed to be a character? Am I supposed to be naming a character, or is this... Oh, sorry. Round the final round is locations. Okay, yeah, it has to be Atlantis. I one thousand percent. Okay, that, that's, that's two doubloons for you. Yes. Wait. So it's two, two and, and a half doubloons. Two and a half. Yeah. Yeah. It's two and a half. Come on, dude. That one was too easy. Uh, it was too easy. That's why I was like, we don't need to spend too much time on this one. But Atlantis, I do think maybe I will do another dedicated video all about. Uh, mythological locations and world building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Atlantis is. There's a reason that Atlantis has so many adaptations of it. Um, right. And if if you want to hear more about adaptations, go listen to our in between episode. Ooh, yeah. Adaptations. Good should one. be should be coming out soon. So keep an eye out. Soon. You heard it here first. Soon. <laughs> That's when it's coming out. It's coming Dude, out in, in between. Just like, in between, if you on, can the episode. edit, like whenever we say soon, I don't know how you do this, but like put echo on it and like reverb and just like soon. Soon, you know? yeah, I can do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. So yeah, we'll we'll do a whole another discourse on it on Atlantis. Um. But I think it, we can. I okay. I have one, one last riddle here for you. Okay. The the last location. Sure. Um, where whispers tell of waters bright that grant a boon beyond our sight, in lands unknown where time takes flight, a secret lies veiled in light. What? Uh. That's actually super cryptic. Chat GPT. Uh, <laughs> There's no way I would have gotten this. Um, w w waves? You said waves, right? At the beginning. Uh, um, where time flies. Waters. Waters where, bright. Waters bright. Where time flies. What does that mean? Um, but then it's like, Okay, I can sort of get it. This has to do with like, I all I can think of is like those ancient calendars, with like the stone, like the Mayan calendars, where like the the stone has to do with the time, and it has to do with the light. Um. Yeah, this like is like a sundial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. 
But that's not a location. That's a thing. Unless... I don't know, dude. This one's this one's hard. Maybe like a, a pyramid, like a. It's a location, but this is ah oh, no. If it's like Atlantis. Oh, El Dorado. I'm just gonna go you're, with El Dorado. You're in the ballpark of like legendary locations, but it's it's not El Dorado. Okay, so, what is it? No, no doubloon for you there. It is the Fountain of Youth. Oh, the Fountain of Youth. Dang, man. Yeah, that is. I don't know too much about the Fountain one. of Youth uh, as a location, more so as like something people are searching for. Um, kind of like National Treasure kind of a deal. Yeah, I do think they actually do search for the Fountain of Youth. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I'd have to watch them again. The Fountain of Youth, uh, just because, and uh, as a final thought here, as we're kind of wrapping up the discussion. Sure. The Fountain of Youth to me is this like unobtainable location that you almost never really fully see come to fruition, if that makes sense. Like yeah. any, any iteration uh, of a story that involves the Fountain of Youth, I don't, I'm not necessarily sure they ever do find the Fountain of Youth, or at least not in its fullness. They might find it for a few seconds, but aren't able to reap of its benefits before there's some strange caveat to it. Or yeah, I'm having a strange alongside it or something. I'm having a strange callback to Kids Next Door. You know, codename Kids Next Door on, on uh, Cartoon Network. There was an episode where they're looking for the Fountain of Youth, and I think they find it, but then it turns out that like whoever drinks from it like turns super old or something. I can't remember exactly, but there was like a catch to it. Um, like not really working. So I, I'm with you where it's like, yeah. there's usually always a catch or you never find it. Like, cause it's like too good to be true. It's almost like, a uh, this like idea of the idea of immortality is just like something that people are always like looking for, but that can never reach. And like, that's the embodiment of it as like a thing to find. Um, Right, right. But yeah, it's super weird. I, I, because I feel like I don't know when it originated, but it's definitely something that has been thrown around forever. You know, maybe like the whole, the tree of life kind of thing. Uh, maybe it was around that time or something. I'm not sure. Cause I guess there's always been that idea yeah, of like I... this place that just gives you eternal life or something. Right. Right, a mystical place in in stories that gives you uh, some enormous boon that ultimately becomes unobtainable. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting uh, story element that I also don't see too often utilized. Um, that I wish I did see it utilized more often. Yeah, it's I I honestly think that immortality is such an interesting storytelling thing like i feel like not a lot of people actually go through with it like there's uh what's it called um i can't remember me the, the you know the movie that has the queen music about the is it called what highlander is that what it's called um it's about like the guy who dude i don't know there's like a, two people that are immortal and it's like about them that's like the only story i know though that like uh has anything to do with people actually having immortality uh, but most of the time it's almost Full Metal Alchemist is kind of a way to obtain. Well, it's like pseudo. I know Full Metal travel is, through it. Yeah. Full Metal is kind of like what happens when someone like, per, like pursues that, like what, what do they end up being like? And like, what ends up happening to them? Cause I think the moral of the story when it comes to immortality is that there's no easy way. There's no shortcuts in life. And I feel like that's a big, big moral of it is, when if something seems too good to be true it usually is and there's also that other side of it where it's like when people actually do obtain immortality usually they realize that it's not a good thing like the mortality of man is what gives life meaning and like all that stuff so like there's like there's so many interesting caveats to that side of like existence that uh storytelling i think really goes along well with it and yeah, I don't know. It's I I think it's cool. I think 
more people should should do stories about it. Yeah. Um, I think what we've learned a lot from this discussion um, is just this. There's a reason that these stories lasted this long and that they're still to this day pretty well known. And the way that they used to explore characters in such fine detail and and stuff, I think we can take a lot of inspiration from that to write really moving stories. That's that's the word I can describe for a lot of ancient stories is they're very moving. They yeah. Make you think at the end. Yeah. I, um, I, you know, they're way more about the actual story itself and the the meaning behind it and less about uh you know whether or not it's gonna sell a lot of money you know like i feel like you know it's a lot of the stories these yeah. days are people are either making them for the wrong reason or it's there's just a lot of other caveats mixed in because so like i mean there's another thing with like so many stories are out there that how do you make your story stand out um you know back then they were just able to purely tell the stories in their heart and you know, it's it's cool to see them like last this long because you're, you're totally right. It really is a, a testament to how good they are for, for people to still be talking about them and uh, all that stuff. So, yeah, you're making me want to go back and yeah. read the Odyssey and everything or maybe maybe find a for sure. Yeah, some, some other adaptation or something. I know that uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey probably has a lot of inspiration from that not after you've told me but i don't know if that game is accurate though it's probably a mixture of a lot of I, things I think um it, i think they probably take a lot of liberties in that they, they probably so. do but, but hey still cool since we're wrapping up here uh now's your chance well don't click off yet but like uh go check out some of that other stuff research this and see if you can take any of that ancient wisdom and put it into your own stories yeah but uh before you do that make sure to, to give this episode a like give, give us a, a like share. if you really enjoyed what you heard just please share it with people you know um we really are trying to build a community and, and of story lovers and and people who feel the same enjoyment that we have uh, we yeah. have a lot of other really really good episodes um we've talked about mysteries we've talked about villains and ancient weapons and stuff like that we even had a, a interview with uh lauren blaney a, a person who works on actual movie sets she was able to tell us what that was like so go check out some of that other stuff yeah go check out our videos and we really we really do want to talk about stories so if you want if you have any thoughts about any of this stuff put it in the comments and we will we will be sure to keep that discussion going but yeah, just thank you guys for listening if you've made it this far. Uh, we really appreciate it. We will see you in the next story dive. Take care, guys. Bye.